so I remember liking it the first time, but now, oh my goodness, it really got me. This humor is unbeatable. Because I'm actually invested in these characters despite every single one of them being terrible. Not every one of them, pretty much every single one of them is terrible. I finished the first Percy Jackson book. I read it super fast. I've read this before. There's a review up on my channel of my thoughts on it after I read it. And I really enjoyed it the first time around and I didn't really like book two. And I enjoyed books three and four but kind of lost my momentum and never finished the series. A little bit of background about my reading with the series. But now I... I just think that it was the wrong time for me uh, to continue on with the series, but I continued just because I did. And now I'm excited to give this series another shot, which is why I'm rereading it and finishing it out this time. Um, so I just finished book one. I read it super fast because I actually remembered it quite well. Uh, a lot of the details stuck with me, which was really, really fun to get to re-experience it because there's tons of foreshadowing. Um, if you don't know, I mean, you know, but whatever. It's Percy. He's a half-blood, which means that he is, he's a demigod. So his, uh, he, he lives with his mom and his stepdad and his father. He finds out one day after fighting a kindly one which is like a demon basically he finds out that uh he is a half-blood and so he goes to camp half-blood where he learns to fight and uh he doesn't know who his dad is and so there's a good chunk of the book where we don't know who his dad is and um it was fun it was fun to pick up on the foreshadowing this time because there was quite a bit of it uh, so it was cool to see how early on it started and all the different places that it was i really liked that um i also loved this time around even more so i remember liking it the first time but now oh my goodness it really got me percy's relationship with his mom is basically the best thing ever i wrote down some of my favorite quotes a word about my mother before you meet her. Her name is Sally Jackson and she is the best person in the world, which just proves my theory that the best people have the rottenest luck. She worked odd jobs, took night classes to get her high school diploma, and raised me on her own. She never complained or got mad. Not even once, but I knew I wasn't an easy kid. Then I heard my mom's voice. Percy? She opened the bedroom door and my fears melted. Then he describes his mom. These are several quotes that I'm kind of compiling together. Then he describes what his mom looks like and he says, as he's describing her, he says, when she looks at me, it's like she's seeing all the good things about me. None of the bad. I've never heard her raise her voice or say, un or say unkind words to anyone not even me or Gabe. And really it's all throughout this entire book. Anytime he gets the opportunity to think about or talk about his mom, it's just, it's just really beautiful. I don't know, you don't read a lot of middle grade or YA books where the kids just have an amazing relationship with their parents. And I love to read it. I'd love to see it. My favorite of like kids shows that my son watches, uh, my favorites are always the ones where the parents are there and they're healthy and they're sweet to their kids and I don't know, I understand why it makes it makes sense to have conflict with your parents that way when the kids go off on adventures like you just have a ready and easy excuse but it's really really lovely to see parents that care and that love their kids and, and kids that see it and appreciate it. Oh, it just... Oh, it makes me very happy. But anyway, the book. Um, like I said, I remembered it really well, so I was just having fun going through it the first time that I was reading through. I was experiencing everything for the first time. I was thinking through everything really hard, and this time I just kind of let go and just enjoyed the ride. It's still, the first time I read it, my complaint, uh, which I enjoyed it the first time, but my complaint was that it's very formulaic and very episodic, and that's really just not my thing, and that's still true. Um, it's still, especially the quest part, um, which is like the entire middle chunk of the book, it's, I read that even faster because it's just not my type of storytelling, but it's so much fun. I think that the way, is it Rick Riordan or Reardon? I think the way the author writes the Greek gods, um, now I know a little bit more about Greek mythology than I did when I first read it, and and I love the way he incorporates these myths and uh, and also gives them 
their his own spin on their personalities while still being loyal to the myth. Uh, I love how much he seeps the mythology into the books. Like when um, one of the characters is telling Percy, um, you know that the that the Greek gods have just been around for millennia and they follow the heart of the West and you can see them in Rome and you can see them here and you can see them there. Look at the carvings on these, you know, national. Uh, monuments and and look at the tapestries and and the statues and look at all these different cultures that the gods show up everywhere they just show up in different ways and um, I really really like how it kind of just seeps into the world I think that's one of my favorite things about fantasy stories like this um, where where you reach out into the real world and make it make sense and make it feel almost like oh wait that 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 seems like like I could almost convince myself of this you know like and I think that's fun when it almost feels real and I think he does an amazing job at that I also just think that it's fun <laughs> like I just it's just a really fun story to read my favorite part uh, I guess I shouldn't tell you because it's near the end of the book can I just tell you no here's my hand Mute the video if you don't want to hear what my favorite part is. It's not really much of a spoil. It's a little bit. Of it's a spoiler. So mute the video. Ready? When my hand goes down, unmute the video. When we're in the underworld is definitely my favorite part. That part is so fun. Now you can unmute. See the hand's gone. Um, <laughs> so I don't know. It's just. It was just. It's fun. It's just really really fun. I like. I like the way the author, Reardon, Riordan. I like the way he makes it all make sense. I like the way he justifies everything and explains everything. And when we get to this mythological stuff, he's like, well, yeah, of course it's that way. And here's why. And it's like, yeah, all right. I almost believe you, you know, like uh, he just, he does a good job. It's, I'm enjoying it a lot. So I had a ton of fun rereading book one and, um, I'm not going to reread book two because I actually remember that one super well as well. And I also remember I really didn't like it that much and it kind of made me lose my momentum with the series a little bit. I pushed through anyway, but I wasn't really feeling it so much after book two. So I want to just skip it and go straight into book three, fresh eyes, enjoy it. I'm really, really, really excited for that actually. So I'm going to do that and I'm also going to start Hitchhiker's Guide book two, which I'm so excited for. My dad's already read it and he said it's a huge step down. <laughs> I'm just gonna pretend he didn't tell me that and I'm going to love it. Um, so I guess that's it. So yeah, welcome to the vlog. beginning the universe was created. This has since then made a lot of people mad and is generally considered a bad choice or a bad decision I think was the opening line to uh, book two in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. An excellent book. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy was brilliant. Let me adjust this a little bit more. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy was brilliant. Um, I loved every second of it and I haven't stopped talking about it since I read it. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Restaurant, the, rest, the Restaurant at the End of the Universe was also very good. Um, I, so I lost the book. I don't know where it is, but I thankfully had bought the audiobook for my dad. So when I misplaced the book, 
when I was halfway through reading it, I just switched to the audio. Um, I don't like that we changed our narrator. I think the reason they did that is because the guy who narrates the series from two forward, from book two forward, I think he was an actor in the movie maybe. I didn't look into it, but Stephen Fry was the narrator in the first audiobook. And granted, I mostly physically read it and I didn't listen to much of the audiobook, but it was Stephen Fry and it doesn't matter. Let's talk about the actual book. Restaurant at the End of the Universe um, takes place, picks up right where the end of book, where book one ended and they are hungry. So they're going to a restaurant at the end of the universe, not physically at the end of the universe, but in time. So you can make a reservation at this restaurant and a show plays during your dinner. Um, and the show is you're watching the end of the universe. When the universe ends, we're at that point in time and we get to watch it as a show. After the meal, after the show, you get to time travel back to your time frame, back to your dimension and space and all the things. But our cast of nitwits um, overshoot and now they're in prehistoric times on Earth. So um, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's, it's, it's full of the same kind of humor. The characters are still phenomenal. Marvin is just a star in this series. But everybody, really there's not, there's not a dud character in this series. Um, still tons of that dry, witty, British humor. Uh, still a decent amount of introspection. A lot of really cool um, references to the number 42. 42 is just thrown casually in there throughout the book, which I, I really appreciated if you've read the first book then you know why that should make me happy. The difference is from book one into book two, I felt an urgency. I need book two now. And with book two, I feel that was fun. I'm definitely continuing on with the series, but I'll probably pick up a couple things in between. This humor is unbeatable. I have also read some um, Hunter x Hunter. Let me get some, let me, I'll be right back. I have started the Chimera Ant arc. So I finished 18, I read all of 19, and I've read most of 20. And this is probably all I'm going to read this week because I have, I have stuff going on tomorrow. Um, so I will update you now, timestamps, if you're not a Hunter Hunter person. So Chimera Ant has only just begun and already it, um, <laughs> it just keeps, Togashi just keeps elevating things. He just keeps making things deeper and darker and more intense. There are some scenes in this, oh wow, barely any of, only that much of this volume was Chimera Ant. Um, there are some scenes in this volume that I I don't know how the anime could have depicted without just, I mean, it, it was chilling to me just seeing it in the manga, really, really chilling. Uh, the Chimera Ants, at first when they were first introduced, I was like, I'm sorry, <laughs> what are we doing right now? Because it's a weird concept, it's a really weird concept, but it also just like instantly takes off and is really, really engaging and intense and exciting from the get-go. So despite it being really weird and me, my gut reaction is to be a little bit hesitant about it. Um, it was also engaging so fast that I was able to just, just go right into it. Um, I have been loving hanging out with Kite. Win or lose, it'll be hell. I, he is such an intense character that clearly cares about them, um, but is also just like, if you can't, if you can't do it, if you can't keep up with me, go. Um, I really, really like him. There's some, the Chimera Ants are doing such dark, dark things. Uh, and their, their innate uh, brutality and lust for not just a kill, but for torturing is something. Gon's, Gon's first kill stands out to me 
for really big reasons, but I won't go into that. I really want to go into that uh, in the review, but that was a really intense moment for me. And the other thing that really stands out to me big time is, uh, let me see if I can find it. It's when, I mean, Kite's been beheaded, but I don't think he's actually dead. Togashi kind of spoiled me at the beginning of uh, volume 20. He does these little summaries. Here's the key players. Here's what they've done so far. And for Kite's introduction, he was like, Kite's dead. Or is he? And it's like, okay, so he's not then. But anyway, um, the scene where the one guy that was in the Hunter Challenge, let me go fix this. The scene where the one guy from the Hunter Challenge uh, and the bee girl when they get attacked by the chimera ants and he, his head gets cut open and then the one, the cat one, is like poking around in his brain trying to figure out how to use Nen. And, oh, let me see if I can find it. When the cat character is poking around in his head to find out how to use Nen and then whenever they're done using him, they just kill him, that scene made me physically nauseous. There's actually been a couple of scenes in this arc that have made me nauseous, like genuinely nauseous. They've been so disturbing, um, which I mean, is not a complaint. It's just, it's so intense, uh, but I'm loving it. And I don't know how I would stomach watching it in the anime. A character that I'm loving, here she is. I don't even know her name, but I love her. She's incredible, and I'm excited to hang out with her more. Sorry, I'm trying to cook lunch while I talk to you. Anyway, I'm having a great time with this arc. It's intense and terrifying and gross and intriguing, and I can just tell, I, I just feel like Togashi is playing with themes in a really intentional way. He did in York New, and I'm really excited to see what he's gonna do with Chimera Ant. I'm enjoying it so much. Um, Greed Island, sorry it's taken so long to get that video edited and up, but it will be up on Monday on the channel. Uh, so there's that. I'm loving Chimera Ant. I really enjoyed Greed Island. I'm really excited about that review. I hope that you guys are gonna enjoy it because um, I just, I think that, I just, I had a lot to say about Greed Island. Um, Chimera Ant will be split into more than one video though. But anyway, that's my update. See you tomorrow to finish off the vlog. other scene in um, the restaurant at the end of the universe that I was thinking about that was so funny. Uh, there was this infuriating character that just refused to acknowledge any kind of truth or reality or commonly accepted fact um, in this world and and one of our one of our leads was so irritated in speaking with him uh, because it was just it was just a frustrating conversa conversation conversation and this guy would just talk in circles and and dodge any sort of um, hard truth and and um, the guy eventually said the law knows I don't know X Y and Z and and our our lead that was that was interacting with him he was like aha see you acknowledge the law and then the guy scoops up his cat and starts petting him and he's like i call my cat the law and it's just like it's just it was just i i, I finished the book yesterday and i haven't stopped thinking about it i when i first finished it i was like okay this is still excellent i still had a great time i still laughed my whole way through Everything that was good about book one was also good about book two, but just on a smaller scale. So I was a little bit disappointed that it wasn't as much love, but the more time I spend away from it, the more I'm still thinking about it. I mean, it's been a day, 
but I'm still thinking about it. I'm reading other things and I'm still just remembering scenes that just make me chuckle. I don't know, it was a really fun time. I just had a really good time. Um, I still haven't found the book. <laughs> I don't know, but whatever. Um, I'm reading Ship of Magic now, and I am near at the halfway point. I put it down right before half, and let me see if I can find my place, because I didn't have a pencil on me when I was reading it earlier. I'm not going to find my place. I'm near half done with it, um, and so when I put it down, when I put it down, I was loving it, and uh, it was, it, the, but the problem was that it's so slow. So we've had approximately, what, 350, 350 pages of, of family reveling, family scrambling to figure out what to do next, family mourning this tragedy of losing uh, the head of the family and losing the guy who was captain of the ship and the ship was quickened and and now everybody is displaced and there's a lot of inner family conflict and this family is discussing just discussing just sitting in rooms talking and raising objections and ignoring each other and squabbling and fighting and that's what we've been doing for 350 pages I'll find the exact page count later but anyway I got back into it and of course <laughs> of course right after I put it down I well right after I picked it back up immediately the setting changed and now things are changing we're no longer doing this inner family squabbling which I was enjoying because it's so well written but also it's not very motivating to just keep picking up reading the same conversations being hashed out in different ways I was enjoying it but you know there's only so much that you want of that. But of course, as soon as I picked it back up, like the next chapter, everything started moving in different directions. So, you know, now, um, I mean, keeping it vague, uh, Wintro is, you know, he's, he's finding his place on the ship and Althea is uh, finding that her place on the ship wasn't as, uh, firm, or rather, not this ship, but her place at sea wasn't as solid as she had thought. Um, one character is making me very concerned because she is trying desperately to grow up too fast, and also there's this um, this conflict within the family that's happening where they have these great debts, and it I just I just it looks like this young girl who's too young and who's trying to be too old, I'm afraid she's going to get sold off to probably someone terrible because into marriage because of this debt that the family, I'm just worried, I'm just worried about her. It's still the same, it's still a lot of very slow moving, very, very character focused, very immersive and beautiful writing. I mean, I love her writing, but it's still very, very slow. Again, the difference is with Assassin's Apprentice, with the Fitz books, it was this beautiful, beautiful, immersive, fantastic writing, but it was, I just didn't care about Fitz, and so I couldn't stick with it. And with this one, it feels completely the same but different because it's this slow moving, beautiful, immersive writing that I, I'm loving because I'm actually invested in these characters despite every single one of them being terrible. Not every one of them. I love Wintro, but. Um, pretty much every single one of them is terrible. That's what's going on here. I haven't read a ton more this week. I only just picked it back up yesterday after I finished the restaurant at the end of the universe thing something. But I am very much enjoying it. I also picked up the third book in the Percy Jackson series. And funny enough, as much as I remembered very well the first two books, I could not for the life of me remember the basic plot of book three. But as soon as I picked it up, you know, we've got the we've got the hunt, we've got the, the, the ladies of the hunt, we've got um duh I forgot their names. Oh no. Nico, you know, the siblings, the siblings. We've got them, which I I forgot about them. I can't believe I forgot about them because I love them. And I forgot, oh, anyway. 
I still don't really remember the plot of this one very well, but I remember the characters now that I've been reintroduced to them and I remember the effect they had on me last time. So I'm really, really excited to be reading that one again too. I'm enjoying it a lot. Um, I think that's all. I haven't read any more Spy Family, unfortunately. Well, that's not true. I have read more Spy Family, but I haven't finished volume two. It's just been a really busy week and I haven't had a lot of time to reading. So Hunter Hunter has pretty much gotten all of my, I've had a lot of time of reading manga and Hunter Hunter, Hunter has gotten pretty much all of my manga time. So I haven't gotten much farther into Spy Family, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to sit down and finish that volume tonight. So it'll definitely be in the next reading vlog. I'll definitely still be reading more Hunter Hunter. I got to figure out how I'm going to split up the Chimera Ant arc. So I kind of want to do it in two videos, but it seems like everybody's suggesting I split it into three. So we'll see how that goes. Feel free to hit me up with your suggestions in the comments if you feel like it. But that was my reading this week. Percy Jackson, more Hitchhikers, got back into Ship of Magic, more Hunter Hunter. I'm having the best time. I'm reading just a ton of really awesome stuff. So it's been good. Please um, chat with me more in the comments if you want to talk about any of these books, if you want to talk to me about whatever, make some guesses on where the book is because I'd like to know. I post videos every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday. Mm -hmm. Bye. I found it! It was in the diaper bag.